This is an early to mid 1970s Montgomery Ward tube television, 19 inch portable tube television. Montgomery Ward was a anchor department store that was usually in big major malls and their brand was Ward's Airline. Montgomery Ward's was a lot like what Sears was kinda still is for a limited time only. Uh, they had an automotive department, they did financing, they had TVs, refrigerators, you know, clothing, uh, a lot like it was a, a lot like a lot of these big stores that are going away and what kind of dates this television is the those sliders they were only used for a few years I think in the early 70s 72 to 75 or something like that the sliding controls they were real fashionable for a minute you could see the volumes broken off. Anyway, this set came from, this is one of my dump rescue sets. And in a previous video some years ago, I checked the CRT. It was kind of low. I did a very low level rejuvenation on it. It woke up. I'd like to get this to work. It's all tube. It's all compactron tubes. I don't know who made it. Maybe GE made it. I'd like to try and identify it and get a SAMS on it. I haven't gone that far. Get the service data on it. I don't know who made it. I don't know who was making stuff for Montgomery Ward at that time. I suspect it might be General Electric. It might be a GE TV. Uh, hopefully we can identify that and get it to work. I'd like to see it work. At one time these were everywhere. Now they're extinct. Well, I just plugged it in and it's drawing uh, uh, 72 watts. So, vintage 1970s Montgomery Ward color television repair. Let's see if we can get this thing to work. 70 watts, what is that, the filaments? And that would be correct. The filaments are lit. So let's see, this was also a time when instant on was fashionable too. So that's interesting when I push I believe this is the power switch this one down here is broken I have no idea what this one is so when I push this it goes from 55 watts to 70 watts interesting so with what I believe the power switch off uh, the 50 watts you can see there we have a very dim filament glow so yeah this is instant on like I say that was very fashionable at the time in fact is this a switch for it right here instant play I'm sorry not instant on instant play Which, yeah, instant bake. Okay, let's all take a really good look at the inside. Now that looks like RCA. That convergence assembly really looks like RCA to me. Like I say, it's all compactron tubes. And yeah, it's pretty crusty and rusty and nasty inside. But that shouldn't stop it from working. I've never seen dirt stop a set from working. 
even though I consistently get a ton of comments that dirt is conductive and will screw it up and the first thing you should do is pressure wash it and blow all the IF coils apart and ruin all the transformers and everything else and then someone else will come back and say well I put mine in the dishwasher and it always works better afterwards well we don't do that here I have my own way of doing things and that's the way I'm going to continue to do them which is to leave the dirt and embrace the dirt the dirt don't hurt nobody okay I have a suspicion this 23K18 might be a chassis number. And the 23K18 appears again right there. Is that resistor bypassed? Are both of those resistors bypassed? Maybe that's some crude factory fashion of adjusting the focus or something. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, the mystery is who makes it. It's interesting, there's some trim pots up here in the front. Right there. I wonder what those are for. These TVs just had a billion adjustments to compensate for all the drift and variations and cheap components and the tubes and I mean look at how many adjustments anyway uh, oh here we go ooh Ward's electronics equipment this has a date with a magnifying glass G A I One nine nine three stupid ass polarized power plug. FDA tried to take my menthol cigarettes away. Uh, try and deny me of my right in a free country to electrocute myself. What is wrong with these nanny state freaks? Anyway. 23K18, I, I just, 23K18 didn't come up to anything, but I put 23K1 in to the SAMs, and, and 23K seems to be a Motorola chassis prefix, but I'm not, this is not Motorola. I, at least I don't think Motorola would build anything this sla sloppy. Maybe, maybe this is Motorola, I don't know. Anyway, this is GAI12933A, which I do have a solid cross fastenth. And of course, it has not been scanned and uploaded yet because none of them exist. It's never been requested. So, I guess I'm going to have to go dig the paper copy out. Come on, Sams, get it together, man put out some decent quality scans and upload everything just because it's not a commonly requested schematic for a Zenith Transoceanic or CTC 16 upload everything fill your server to the max that way it's all about convenience right give me convenience or give me death all right before we dig in there let's do this let's power it up so we should see, you heard the uh, degaussing bump there, and the filaments are getting hotter. Now we have a fuse here, and we have a circuit breaker. You know, this is the era when these TVs were just almost out of control complicated. 
So we're at 70 watts. Let's see. So pushing the circuit breaker has no effect. So it could just be the circuit breaker is just filled with mud because we don't have we don't have B plus. So obviously we have tube filaments. That's where our 70 watts goes, and we have 50 watts with the power turned off, which is our instant on. I'm sure that's totally Energy Star compliant. I'm, I'm suspecting this breaker. Sometimes these breakers are just for the B+, they're not for the filaments. And that right there could be a cathode fuse. So here it is. September of 1974, so this is one of the very last tube sets. And this does not appear to be hybrid, this appears to be all tube. So this is one of the very last uh, all tube color sets that was probably made. Alright, as I said earlier, this is when these sets started to become just insanely complicated. This is just the power supply. So we come in through a 4 amp fuse and then we got two power switches here. So it does have some type of low voltage transformer. We have our B, main B plus that's right here. And then a tree of voltages off of that main B plus. And then we have a transformer here. What's the point of this? And why do they have a doubler circuit on a transformer? Huh. Maybe this the point of this is just to isolate the CRT filament or something. Anyway, let me look at this for a minute. I'm starting to look stupid. This is so complicated for for what? All right. So this is the quick on switch. So that gives us mains power line voltage through the 64 ohm down through this transformer through the filaments and then the main power switch which we know is working because it goes from 50 watts to 70 watts and we hear the degaussing bump so that means the circuit breaker was probably working or probably closed before I fondled it so hard this could be open this is like a CL90 uh, the point of this is just to ramp up the point of this is just to ramp up the uh, B plus a little bit slow but usually the degaussing coil in the voltage dependent resistor are in series with this so anyway there are eight electrolytic capacitors just in this uh, power supply. Anyway, this, this is a hybrid set, so I stand corrected there. We have one here, transistor there, and we have a couple more over here. Here's one here, whatever ATC is. A limiter transistor there so yeah this is hybrid it has a few transistors the airplane says good morning everybody So I think it's safe to say that uh, any normal person would get this into the trash can as quickly as possible and try and uh, minimize the possibility of 
something bad happening. Anyway, I think I see the problem right there. Those two burnt wires are probably where the thermistor was. All right, so R V 101 is still in place and RT 101 is gone, blown up. So let's see, what is RT 101? Is that that CL 90? And it sure is. That's that ramp up thermistor that a lot of guys install in vintage radios to keep them from feeling the initial surge when you turn them on. It starts out usually around 100 ohms and then as it heats up it quickly drops down to like below 1 ohm. So it's, it's kind of a soft start uh, thermistor. So that is missing right there are the two leads to it so that very well could be why our uh, well definitely is why we have no B plus but did something cause it to blow up it shouldn't it should take the fuse or the circuit breaker out but I might have ruined the circuit breaker by fondling it so let's let's do some voltage measurement checks Okay, we have 116 volts here, so that's line voltage, so the, and I heard the degaussing pulse, so I did not damage the circuit breaker. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a light bulb in there instead of just, I could just short those together, but that would be an awfully harsh start for something that's been sitting for probably 25, 30 years in the desert. Yeah, a 150 watt tungsten lamp. And here we go. Gonna power it up right now. That was a bit disappointing. Oh, 100 watts. So, oh, there we go. Hundred fifty watts. So we definitely don't have any shorted capacitors. I wonder why they use a soft start in this. Is that something that they engineered in in the beginning or is that something that they came up with after there were so many failures? I hear some high voltage hissing. Okay, I bypassed the light bulb but now I hear arcing. Oh yeah. And we have a raster, believe it or not. And a little noise from the speaker. You know, if you were to ask me, I would say that the odds of this working are just so low due to the complexity and the abuse. And these things were never that good to start with. That's why you don't see any of them around anymore because they were just unreliable and didn't last. It seems to do something, but not much. God, this is treacherous. Wish you could smell the uh, ozone when I open this. this. is incredible. Anyway, EIA 1210. Not that that's who made the set, but...
power. Oh yeah, that that looks a little X radiation on uh, Saturday morning. Anyway, so here's what we got. Uh, bypass the soft start thermistor and we have a raster high voltage vertical deflection. It all looks pretty solid. Uh, however, there's only a slight hum from the audio. Which sounds like the vertical uh, more than anything. And uh, a raster, but no nothing coming through like we have a dead tuner or dead IF. However, if I turn the switch to channels, I get something. I mean, this tuner is it's uh, a quite, quite coarse would be a, an elegant way to say that it's basically filled with rust and sand and grinding its way apart as I rotate it with a pair of ice grips. So, okay, so what do we do with this? Do we just try, try feeding an IF signal into it? So this appears to be the IF input into the main board here which doesn't even appear to be plugged in all the way so this comes out of the tuner and then goes into the uh, IF on the TV set so maybe I wonder why they had initially scrapped this was it just because the mine closed up at the time or did it have a fault or the mysteries of how it got where it was but I think that uh, well I'll try it now with that plugged in but I, that's where we feed the uh, IF input into the thing from the other thing to see if it will do something but I have to use an isolation transformer on this and I have to make sure it's isolated because this is a hot chassis set and I've already cremated enough uh, test equipment playing with these hot chassis sets. This is almost comical. Um, you can kind of see, I know the blanking, but you can kind of see the the circle there. This is window circle. And that's as best I can get it. It, it just won't. Uh, <laughs> that's direct IF in. It's like there's no video getting through it. And yeah, it's just a lime green blob with a kind of a, a shadow of a circle in the middle. There's a little bit uh, better. I adjusted the green down a little bit. Yeah, that's that's what's getting through. Good, just total trash. And also, I have no uh, turning the brightness and contrast have no effect at all. Maybe there's an issue. Maybe the pots are open from rust, or maybe there's an issue with the uh, some in the video interesting I screwed with this and now the brightness is working and the color is controlling the entire uh, picture like all that's getting through is chroma off with air but is this this is the delay line is this broken I mean 
mean, that solder has got to be broken right there. You can see where that goes through the board. It's just free hanging. Sure is. Just broken. Failed solder joint, but that shouldn't cause this symptom. Well, wait a second. Yes, it would because the de yes, the delay line lets the composite video through and slows it down so that it matches the color because the color takes time to process. Something like that. Let me solder that. Well, but while I'm waiting for the soldering thing to heat up, I uh, decided to just ohm the delay line out for the entertainment value of it. It's open. It's just open. So that would explain why our uh, composite video signal's not getting through, why it's just this kind of whatever you want to call it, this smudged out nothing. And here's another connection to the delay line that's just totally open too. So I don't know what's going on with this. This is uh, very bizarre. But all the connections are open. None of them connect to each other. What a bizarre failure, but I guess it's, you know, totally understandable given the situation. So one side comes up to this coil that's all baked and that goes to the, to the delay line winding and you can see that yellow strip right there under the winding well that makes up if you look over here you can see that one side of the airplane connects directly to the coil right there and the other side of the airplane connects to the that white or that yellow strip which makes up a capacitor so there's a, there's actually this thing as a capacitor and inductor I mean it's kind of a specialized piece of gear and there's the delay line right there like I say it comes straight out of the video output and uh, that's actually your video feed into the CRT for the just regular composite video and that makes sense why our contrast control isn't doing anything the contrast control isn't doing anything when you turn it because there's nothing connected here and that's the coil and capacitor combo I'm talking about and it's actually this thing that's open not uh, the coil that's wrapped around this this big coil is good 260 ohms so uh, no no telling what the value of that was I, I guess I could just bypass it so I bypassed the delay line just with a piece of wire on the bottom of the board and now I do have a, a composite video getting through but boy is it does it look trashed it just looks like garbage maybe I should pop the CRT tester back on this and see make sure that I'm not you know um, fighting a hill I can't get over because this this it looks like it could be a multitude of different pro actually I'm gonna go in through the tuner again real quick I think the tuner is dead but let's try forcing a signal into it yeah, this tuner is completely dead. Even blasting the full output of the Syncor into it is nobody home at all. Uh, in the in a previous video, I think in the last video, I was working on a solid state 1974 Motorola, and I went through about two hours of video fixing the tuner, and that TV actually works good now. But I don't know if I want to get into that that again on this. That's uh, we got too many other problems. 
One thing that is good about this is the high voltage and horizontal and vertical deflection are working and the vertical deflection is usually where most of the problems with these sets any TV the biggest most difficult to fix problems are usually the vertical circuit but in this thing we have a whole host of other uh, delay line and I, I have a feeling there could be a lot more cracked solder joints in this thing too and that's not even getting into this rusty crusty convergence assembly I'm afraid to even turn these the um, high voltage, all that hissing and weird noise has completely gone away. That was just, it was pretty damp out here last night. It was almost foggy and I had this covered with a towel, but still a lot of times these high voltage things, once they dry out, they quiet down. So this pretty much validates what I see in the setup that the, uh, the, the green is just booming strong, the red is marginal, and the the blue there is dead. Um, I've already rejuvenated this previously and I'm not going to do it again. That's like trying to beat a dead horse and you're never going to get it back to where it would validate spending the time to fix all the electronics. So yeah, as you can see, green is turned all the way down, blue is turned all the way up, and red is pretty much in the kind of in the middle and also green is all the way down over here um, so there's a lot of problems with this thing the tuner is bad the delay line is bad and then there's a whole bunch of other problems with it too could be bad tubes a lot of rust the main problem was the thermistor was blown out in the delay line and the tuner. I mean it would actually have a picture with a converter box if it wasn't for those things being bad. That in, a, in of itself is a lot. Um, I, you know, I got, I got a ton of other TVs waiting to be brought back to life. I don't think I'm going to go any further with this. Maybe I'll play with it tonight and kind of set it up so that we can actually see some TV on it, just kind of as a whatever. But yeah, I don't think this is worth moving forward on. I usually don't give up on them, but this one's a little bit too plagued with problems with a dead CRT. And if the heart is bad, you don't need to move, move forward building a, a beautiful corpse. That just doesn't make sense. So there's the coil that was open as part of this thing. I wonder if I wonder if this is on the SAMs. Well, it's actually in here, L309, 270 microhenries. So that would be a replaceable part. Okay, we have our Color Master rabbit ears engineered for color TV. As if the signal for color or black and white makes any difference into our pile of crap RCA DTV converter then into the Blonder Tongue Laboratories Agile Modulator and I'm using the IF output here on the BT modulator since the tuner in this TV is dead and I'm going into the RCA there is something wrong with that RCA it's not making good contact so I wanted to get an audio sample here. I'm going to switch it on. I want you to hear the uh, degaussing hit. It's pretty impressive. Also, if anybody knows who made this TV, is this GE General Electric? Is that who made these? Let me know in the comments and I'll try and pin your comment to the top. Um, the delay line is bypassed with a piece of wire. Put the delay line in that plastic bag there. Going forward, I don't know if I'm going to come back to this or not. It's possible, but uh, let's listen to the delay line hit. I'm going to turn it on now. Love that.
Kevin Henry made the tackle. I'm surprised they didn't use a timeout here, Tanya. This is going to take a long time to get back lined up. About seven or eight seconds for it. Greer. Caught. First down, Gary Jennings. Clock stops until they reset the chains. See, this is this if I move this... Uh, if I move this connection around on the circuit board. Long way to go. They need a touchdown. They need 61 yards. Greer, what a throw and catch. Inside the 30, Gary Jennings. A bullet in the traffic. And a contested catch for 33 yards. You have time for Go sports team. I have sores on my arms. I cry when the sores. Sometimes I'm sick, but my mama doesn't have any money for medicine. Her mother, Rosie Mann, feels helpless as she tries to comfort her daughter. Happy times. They do hurt her at night when she sleeps. Happy times. Coming out of them. Decision implant dentistry. The G4 Solutions, a total life changer if you suffer from severe dental issues. With his specialized technique... You can see that the color demodulation is actually working a little bit, but it's all jacked up because there's no delay line. The colors don't match the video because the video is running way ahead of the colors. Now this is the most amazing part. We have a ridiculous amount of digital TV channels now in the LA area. It's actually more channels than the RCA converter box can save. It actually, I think it goes up to 160 or 180 channels and it just freezes. Because that's how many we have now. We just have like 200 over the air channels. Back to back Heismans with two different quarterbacks. Go and football the team. Here's a chance. It's incredible what Lincoln Riley has done the job with him. Under Go airplane. 71% completion percent is that second best in the nation. 39 Look at this one. This one has 12 sub channels. Look at this. Primetime, right here on Fox. Wait. 12 sub channels. No signal. Well, if I had it on a uh, a real antenna, it would be rocking. Ridiculous. Oil. In Mexico, when you get the chorizo, it has a lot more fat than the chorizo you get in the U.S. Even though it makes it well. yeah. The chorizo is going to release its flavor, its color, so you can stop coloring. So is the great elephant. I think I'm overdriving it, that's why it shifted down the signal out of the modulator. The signal out of the modulator is too strong. He's 
kind of thing you want to crank up right here. I think we have a timing issue with this programming. As far as the old programming channels like MeTV and CRT TV, we have all of them here. Every single one of them. All, all of those TVs that play the old, all of those channels that play the old TV channels, old TV shows. Let me try that again. Let's try that again. All of the channels that play the old TV shows, got every single one of them. Oh, of course, operator. I saw him. This is cool because it it has that kind of crappy picture that those old worn out TVs that we remember had. You know, the TV in the barber shop that was just spent. That's the kind of picture this has. It's just crappy and just lo-fi, poor color. 
It's just all nostalgia. It's all washed out and the color's weak and it's just kind of twerko quirculating in the middle if you watch it shifting. how they have the footsteps amplified. You know, so many ways to bring home the holidays with drive up, order pickup, and same day delivery. Target run and done. A better SUV dares to ask why not? Like, why not versatile? Master of all seasons, all the prizes kind of versatile. Why not turn up the comfort, first class comfort? Why not make it rugged? Real rugged. But also... You know, I'd be curious to, next time I put in an order to DigiKey, to actually order that uh, choke, that peaking coil, whatever it was, 240 microhenry, and put the delay line back in and see if it affected the picture at all but anyway um, I don't know if you'll see this one again uh, it's, I got a lot of other stuff and this is in pretty bad shape so anyway 1974 Montgomery Ward's Ward's Airline uh, color TV bad CRT um, and uh, bad CL90 soft startup and delay line choke. So there you go.